So Fred, I understand that MRI or magnetic resonance imaging is a very important tool in, in making a diagnosis of MS nowadays. What is an MRI? So MRI is, is a, it's like an x-ray, but it's not x-rays. It's pictures taken with a giant magnet. And the magnet is actually measuring what hydrogen ions are doing in the water in the brain and whether they're standing up like this or falling over like that. And the MRI machine measures the rate at which these molecules move around and running it through fancy computers, it comes up with images of normal tissue and abnormal tissue. And so in MS, it turns out that the MRI scan is extremely sensitive to the changes that MS produces within the brain and the spinal cord. In fact, so sensitive that the MRI will pick up abnormalities that individuals don't complain about. And so it's possible to have changes of MS within the brain that show up on the MRI, but the individual has no symptoms whatsoever from those particular changes. So when we see these spots, is there a way to tell if these spots are new or old? Or? Sometimes. And so, so if you give an injection of a dye called gadolinium, where there are relatively new abnormalities, new meaning within the last six weeks, that dye shows up brighter on the pictures that you take, and you can say, well, that's a, a relatively new lesion. Um, otherwise, it's very hard to date them, and some of them could have been there for years or decades or whatever. What's important is that they give us an idea of how much activity uh, has gone on with the illness, although they don't necessarily tell us severity. So an individual can have many lesions that don't do very much and a few lesions that do a lot. And so it, it depends in part on where the abnormality is and also how much damage is done because the amount of damage varies from individual to individual. So some people can have these white spots that show up, but the signals get through just fine and so they have no symptoms. And other individuals, the, the lesions can produce more damage to the brain or spinal cord and they will have the kind of symptoms that we've discussed previously. Does it hurt to get an MRI? No, it doesn't hurt at all. It's, it's painless, there's no radiation. The only annoying things about the MRI are one that it's a little confined and so people with claustrophobia don't like it. Uh, although some of our newer machines have bigger chambers and it's a little noisy um, when you're getting the scan and as long as you know it's gonna be noisy, it's, it's not particularly worrisome. But there's no harm to the scan itself. You could have a scan every day for a year and it wouldn't do anything to you, not that we're recommending that. But, but it's not, and so, but it's a very useful tool uh, in MS, but it is, it is not diagnostic. So the other things could cause the same types of white spots. So it's not a diagnosis that you make just off of the MRI alone. So we still need neurologists, not just radiologists. Still need neurologists, right? So, so the, the essence of making the diagnosis is first, as Charcot would have done, take a good history, and second, do a good examination. Then you go on with the test like the MRI, or spinal tap. What is a spinal tap? So a spinal tap is a procedure where, where the physician puts a very thin needle into your lower back, right into the middle, and advances it after numbing up the area until it enters the spinal canal where there's spinal fluid. Now the spinal fluid is, bathes your brain and your spinal cord, um, and you make lots of it, so it's no problem taking, getting it out. You can, you'll make it back very rapidly. And we analyze that fluid um, for looking at things like cells and proteins and other specific changes to assist in making the diagnosis of MS. Again, it's not diagnostic, but also to exclude other possibilities, other inflammatory things, infections, things of that sort. Now, not everybody needs a spinal tap, and so it's not an absolute part of the diagnostic process, but when it helps, it helps. Other tests that can help some are what are called evoked potentials, where you send a signal either up into the nervous system or from the nervous system out into an extremity, and you measure the time it takes to get from start to finish, and that's called a conduction time. Um, and that can give you an idea of what pathways are damaged and whether they're damaged in what's called a silent damage. That is, there's a slowing in the pathway, but it wasn't producing any symptoms, and there they could be very helpful. Let's go back to the spinal tap for a minute. That sounds pretty scary to, to patients, and 
Should they be worried about that procedure? No, not really. It does sound scary. People worry about it. A, it, it doesn't. It doesn't hurt very much. They, you numb it up, so you get a little stick of novocaine or xylocaine or something. So that stings for a little bit. But then once it's numbed up, you really don't feel the needle pass, uh, and there's really no significant risk to taking the fluid out and the procedure that that's done. There is the potential for a headache afterwards, so some individuals will get a headache after a spinal tap, and that sometimes can be rather annoying and can even last for, for days. Um, it's, it's not dangerous, it's just annoying. And we have ways to fix that if they get a bad headache. If it's really bad, yeah, there's ways to fix the leak.